In this episode of Tomorrow's Clinicians, we will be looking at the procedure of recording a 12-lead ECG. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, is performed to assess the rhythm and electrical activity of the heart. To record an ECG, electrodes must be placed in specific positions on the patient's limbs and chest wall, then connected via leads to an ECG machine, which records the electrical activity. The ECG machine produces a trace, which must then be analysed by a qualified member of staff. It is important that the recording of the ECG is done accurately to ensure that the patient can be treated appropriately. To perform a resting 12-lead ECG, you'll require the following equipment. An ECG machine. ECG paper. Disposable silver silver chloride tab electrodes. A razor. An abrasive preparation pad and an alcohol-based cleansing wipe. Before visiting the patient and beginning the procedure, you should wash your hands, put on an apron and gloves if necessary. Ensure that the area where the procedure is to be undertaken is clean and safe and the necessary equipment is available. It is important to ensure you have identified the correct patient. Confirm the patient's identification verbally by asking them to tell you their name, date of birth and the first line of their address. If you're performing an inpatient ECG, then also check the patient's wristband to verify their patient identification number. Cross-check the patient's details with the request form. Check whether the patient requires a chaperone or interpreter to support them. Before commencing the test, briefly explain the procedure to the patient and gain informed consent verbally. You are now ready to prepare the items you'll be using. Place the ECG machine on the patient's left side. Check that there is sufficient recording paper in the ECG machine. Then turn it on. Check there is enough battery power and that the correct settings are selected. the paper speed at 25 mm per second, the sensitivity or gain at 10 mm per millivolt, and the frequency response or filter at 150 Hz. Enter the patient details into the ECG machine. If the ECG machine does not allow you to enter the patient details into it, then you must write the patient's details on the trace when it's printed. Remove the disposable electrode tabs from their packet and place them on the ECG trolley, along with an abrasive preparation pad, the alcohol-based cleansing wipe and a razor if required. While you are preparing the equipment, ask the patient to remove their clothing to expose their chest and arms. Ensure that socks or tights are rolled down or removed to gain access to the ankles. Once you have prepared your equipment and your patient has undressed, ask the patient to lie on the examination couch or bed. This should be flat with one pillow. You are now ready to begin the procedure. Identify the site of attachments for the electrodes accurately and at these sites prepare the skin. This is required to ensure good contact and therefore produce an artefact free and accurate ECG trace. If required use a razor to remove hair. Dispose of the razor in a sharp spin. Using the abrasive preparation pad 
lightly exfoliate the skin surface. Using the alcohol-based cleansing wipe, clean the skin over the exfoliated sites and dispose of the wipe in a clinical waste bin. Once the skin has been prepared, attach the electrodes and leads. Incorrect placement of the electrodes produces diagnostically significant differences on the ECG and as a result patients can be treated incorrectly. Ensure the centre of the electrode is located in the appropriate position. First, attach the electrodes for the limb leads. There are four limb leads. The electrodes are located one on each of the limbs as follows. On the lower limbs, attach an electrode proximal to each ankle. And on the upper limbs, attach an electrode proximal to each wrist. Now move on to attach the electrodes for the chest leads. There are six chest leads. To locate the positions for these, use the sternal angle as a reference point to count down the intercostal spaces. The second intercostal space is directly below sternal angle and from here you can count down to the third, fourth and fifth intercostal spaces. The electrodes are located across the chest wall as follows. For lead 1, labelled V1 or C1, the electrode is located at the fourth intercostal space at the right sternal edge. For lead 2, labelled V2 or C2, the electrode is located at the fourth intercostal space at the left sternal edge. For lead 4, labelled V4 or C4, the electrode is located at the fifth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. For lead 3, labelled V3 or C3, the electrode is located midway between V2 and V4. For lead 5, labelled V5 or C5, the electrode is located to the left anterior axillary line on the same horizontal plane as V4. For lead 6, labelled V6 or C6, the electrode is located at the left mid-axillary line on the same horizontal plane as V4 and V5. In women, the electrode should be placed underneath rather than on top of any breast tissue. Once the electrodes are in place, connect the lead clips to them. You should ensure that the leads are correctly connected to the corresponding electrode tabs. The leads are clearly labelled to enable this. Attach the limb leads to the electrodes as follows. On the right lower leg, place a black lead. On the left lower leg, place a green lead. On the right forearm, place a red lead. And on the left forearm, place a yellow lead. Now move on to attach the chest leads to the corresponding electrodes, C1 to C6, from the patient's right to left. Now the leads are attached, you're ready to take the ECG recording. At this point, if you have a female patient, you may wish to cover the chest to help maintain the patient's dignity while you proceed with the recording, ensuring not to disturb the lead attachments. Ask your patient to be completely relaxed and breathe normally. When you are ready to record, double check your settings and check the screen to make sure that all of the leads are connected and producing satisfactory tracing. Press the record button to record a 12 lead ECG. Check the recording on the screen and if this appears to be adequate, proceed to print. Once the ECG is printed out, check again to ensure the trace is artifact free and that no extra recordings need to be performed. The printout should show an ECG signal followed by another ECG signal which is the same. Assess whether any special circumstances are present which may require additional recordings to be undertaken, such as paediatrics, patients with known dextrocardia and patients with posterior myocardial infarction. If necessary, record these measurements. Now the procedure is complete, allow the patient to redress, clean and clear away equipment, storing it appropriately. 
Remove your gloves and apron if worn and clean your hands. Finally, document on the ECG trace as required. The patient details, along with the time and date of recording, may have automatically been printed depending on the ECG machine settings. If it has not, add this now. Also, make a note of any change to the position of the leads, the position of the patient, or to the settings. Document the procedure in the patient's notes and inform relevant personnel that the test has been completed so that the results can be analysed. I hope that this film has given you an insight into the procedure of recording a 12 lead ECG. Please remember that this film has been produced as a guide in order to demonstrate the principles behind this procedure and must always be used in conjunction with your own classroom training and local guidelines. <laughs>